Uh, I'll be talking about traffic system anomaly detection using uh, STPN. Uh, Shamik is a co-author on this paper, and he had talked about STPN in the previous talk. So I'll be focusing more on the transportation aspects of the thing rather than focusing on the technical details. Um, just to give you an idea in terms of why is this even needed uh, in, in transportation per se. So we, uh, what we are doing in our reactor lab is basically acquiring a lot of data uh, across multiple sensors. Uh, uh, and uh, what we are trying to do is provide uh, decision assistance to multiple agencies. It, it can be uh, OEM provider to cars. So if you're if you talking about whether you are entering uh, anomalous traffic, uh, or it can be a decision maker in, in, in the agency itself, which, which is trying to figure out what, what is going wrong in their system. Uh, so currently, we have a lot of streams of data coming in. And uh, for an individual to sit in and, and find these problems is getting very, very difficult. And we wanted data driven rather than assuming some kind of traffic uh, models, we want to learn it from the data. So the, to show you some examples, what we what we provide to IODOT right now is uh, this this just tells you in 2013 uh, from top to bottom is is an interstate going from Sioux City to Missouri border. And what those lines are suggesting in northbound and southbound direction is the number of minutes you were uh, in congestion for a particular month. So basically, if you were on uh, if you were traveling under 45 miles per hour, we are, we are counting that number. Uh, and, and easily by visualization, you can see that uh, uh, the Sioux City has some congestion. And obviously, uh, this would look much different if you were going through Chicago or something. But in Iowa, this is the congestion we are getting. So we are happy about it. But we still uh, try to uh, make it less. But between 2013 and 2014, you can easily pick out that there's something going uh, wrong from south in the southbound direction. Um, and, and what, what we are seeing is uh, this is particularly happening, happening during the months of summer. Uh, so anyone wants to ta take a guess what, what would be going wrong when we go from 2013 to 2014? Why is the congestion suddenly jumping up so high in, in, in one direction? Construction. Construction is going on. So uh, th this, is, this is just uh, smart humans making that guess. And we want some of these. Uh, knowledge to be extracted by our network. So that is that is one, one thing we want to do. In this case, uh, we want to find out if one day is specifically affecting uh, your whole congestion model, or if there are multiple days in the same month which is causing this. So uh, DOT cares about, uh, DOT's decisions are dependent on what we find the problem to be. If the problems are work zones, we might have to better manage the work zones. If uh, problems are only the few snow day which are happening, we might want to invest in snow plows. So not only finding that whether you are having congestion or not, but also finding how frequent it is, whether it is random or not, becomes very important. Again, the uh, same plot, uh, 2013 interstate 35, uh, bit, between 2013 and 2014, you see that blue lines jump out quite a bit. Um, anyone wants to take a guess what happened between 2013 and 2014 where the congestion was really bad? Uh, Snow. So basically, 2014 was a bad snow, uh, bad snow year, and and you see that impact, and and impact suddenly stops at a point where there, there is 92. Basically, it is from north to south. There there is not much snow in the south, and and, and the congestion is relatively less. And then you see those two crazy graphs. Uh, we, uh, basically, at, at this point, where a human being can quickly make out that there's there is a sensor issue over there, so there is there is not a trend, but a sensor which is going wrong in that direction. But what we want to do is instead of humans sitting in and, and making these guesses, we want to automate this process and and, and directly tell uh, DOT where to invest. Whether they have to invest in snowplows, whether they have to in, invest in better work zone management, or do they have to go back and and modify their sensors? Uh, so that that is one of the motivations why we want to take the batch data. Uh, and uh, and real-time application are different, uh, where you can improve the real-time control. But even the batch data is very important to find uh, the anomalous days in, in your in your data set. Uh, other thing which we also do for DOT is is uh, work zone management. So there uh, we showed DOT that in Iowa space specifically, the congestion happening is because of two prime reasons. Weather and work zones. So they, they have started investing in, in better work zone management. And what we do is we provide this uh, tool to them where, uh, where on the right hand side, you uh, this is all the detectors on that work zone. On the right hand side, you are seeing uh, for every day what the heat map looks like. So green is good, everyone is traveling 
beautifully and red is really bad. In addition to that, we want to also show them that if there is a red, there's a human verification that can be done by camera. So basically what you're seeing on, on that picture is we are hovering over that red uh, zone and a person is seeing a lot of cars in there and they immediately know that something really went bad. And, and how do you support the decisions? Basically what happens is if you tell people in Iowa there is congestion happening, they laugh at you, so you actually have to show them the sensor, and then have to show them that the sensors were not bad. There, there were actually congestion going on in Iowa. So, so the camera things get relatively important. What we have done right now is, is this is more of a human interface, where we provide this interface for all the decision makers. Uh, and we are moving in the direction where we, we don't want to burden them, that every day they have to go back and check this dashboard. We want to come up with a strategy that they can just pick the days where we think that there was something going bad, and then verify it, that there was something actually going bad. So this, this has uh, just, become, uh, just becomes less resource intensive for DOTs to, uh, to monitor all the 50 or 60 work zones which are going on in the state. So they just go back and look at this, the work zones which we tell are, going, are not working properly. Uh, also, uh, a real-time implementation would be that if we pick up these events, we can directly notify the users as well. So if you have something in your car, for example, uh, uh, something in your car similar to Waze, or, or if you have dynamic message board, we can say slow down ahead and, and in real time uh, provide that input. Uh, so uh, we, what we want to do is, is com uh, compare what STPN can do in terms of data-driven method and also compare it, uh, compare it against the performance. If we just took these speed heat maps and do some kind of comparison between days, can we, can, can we come up with even similar predictions? So that was the whole idea why we are doing what we are doing. Uh, the, the steps is basically we are partitioning and symbolization, uh, symbolizing our continuous data set into uh, uh, characters and states. Uh, and then we are uh, finding the STPN models that uh, how this states correlate and uh, transition matrix, then converting that into an information matrix to find out um, in a specific day, uh, we are, we are con con combining all the transition matrix and coming up with a simple information-based metric and then finding the differences in these information metrics uh, between days so that we can find if a, days, if a specific day stands out or not. So th that is the whole idea what we are trying to do. Um, uh, in this specific study, we took uh, 11 sensors, uh, Wavetronics data, which provides speed, and vo uh, speed as well as volume. Uh, we took between 5 a.m. and 11 p.m. specifically, just because of the reason that there was not much traffic and, uh, and we were getting a lot of zero values. Uh, and we made sure that all these sensors had data in, in, in the period where we were analyzing, uh, analyzing our information. So, so the first step of the methodology was symbolization. Uh, there are multiple methods of symbolization, but we use a traffic domain specific method. What, what happens is uh, traffic uh, has something called level of service. So if you have Low, uh, your low speed can be because of two reasons. First is because there is uh, no one out there and you are seeing zero speeds, or there can be there, there are people standing out there but no one is moving kind of, uh, kind of thing. So instead of comparing speed and volume differently, we convert it into a levels, level of service and then uh, provide a time series sequence of those, uh, those symbols. And, and then we estimate the transition matrix between different sensors, so if there are 10 or 11 sensors, we are trying to estimate what, what are the, uh, uh, the transition matrices. Uh, this methodology is exactly the same as what Somic dis discussed earlier, so uh, uh, we are modeling it as um, STPNs. And finally, once we have obtained all these matrices, we try to convert it into a mutual information matrix. Uh, one of the reasons to convert it into mutual information matrix is then we can compare within the day uh, how do they look, look different or not. Um, so, so once we do convert every day of data into mutual information matrix, then we compare between the two days uh, how structurally similar they are. So basically we have gone from, from a time series data to a structural similarity image kind of a data, and then we uh, compare whether these two images are different or similar. So this is what a month looks like. We go from, uh, this is basically just a 
heat map of mutual information. So you see the diagonal elements are really highly correlated, whereas remaining elements are not that correlated throughout the day. Uh, and, and bottom plot gives you the structural similarity between, uh, between the two things. Uh, so we, we find that most of the days, so we, we took day one and compared it against all the days. So assuming that the day one was the normal day, everything which is having uh, lower values of structural similarities is some anomaly. So what you can see is there are these two structural sim sim uh, dissimilarities which happen where you are see seeing a lot of blue, which is different from remaining the first day. And then also you see there is, there is some pattern happening uh, on specific day, day 5, day 12, and day 19th, which are separated by 7. So basically, maybe a Sunday is completely different from day 1 when you are trying to do that. So, uh, so we saw that this pattern was emerging. So we also, what we wanted to do is we wanted to compare the same week in, uh, across uh, same day across the four weeks, so that we we take into account if if the similarity is because dissimilarity is because of weekday versus weekend. Um, after doing this process, we found that even when we compare it against the same day of the week, uh, there are specific uh, numbers where SSM, SSIM is relatively low. Um, and what what we, we what we show over here is these two orange boxes over here, where SSM uh, SSIM was relatively low, correspond to February 8th and February 24th. Uh, you can see even when you compare Wednesday across the region here, you see that there is a little bit more red over here, which means that the level of service during the uh, morning was significantly different from what you typically see in a day. And same thing over here, that uh, it is relatively higher amount of reds, where it was uh, the level of service was significantly lower than what you would assume on, on, on a given Friday. So, um, uh, so th those are the interesting insight. One of the questions to ask is, could we have just taken level of service uh, instead of coming up with an SSIM matrix, could we just compare level of service and, and, and convert? Uh, uh, instead of comparing SSIM using the STPN uh, or mutual information matrix, can we just take this level of service matrix and co convert in, it into SSIM and do the same conclusion, come up with the same conclusions? So, um, uh, so, so the, okay, before that, let me explain to you one more thing. So when we are saying that these two days, we found that it was basically because of snow days. Uh, uh, people would ask, why don't you just look at the snow days and say those, those are the anomalous days, or why don't you look at your crash database and just tell that it was an uh, anomalous day. What happens with traffic is, if you have snow and it snows on a Sunday, uh, it might not affect anything, People are because the volumes are low. Uh, if it snows during the off-peak hours, it might not have the same effect. If there are crashes, if there's no one out there on the road, no one slows down and traffic moves as, as it should move. So there are multiple re uh, reasons which simultaneously come together to, to actually make a traffic look different and, and, and actually a day become an anomaly. So we cannot just take one reason uh, to say that it will cause anomaly or not. We have to depend on what we are observing on the traffic data set. And what we are showing over here is basically uh, in terms of crashes, there are multiple crashes happening on different days, uh, and some of those crashes result in low SSIM value. That means that it significantly changes the characteristics of traffic, whereas other crashes don't have any, uh, uh, any uh, impact on traffic. So basically, our method takes care of um, issues which, which are uh, leading to some problems and which are not leading to other problems. This answers our second questions that could I have taken Instead of converting everything into STPN and, and, and mutual information matrix, could I have just taken level of service images and compared it uh, among each other to find anomalous days? So on the left-hand side, what it does is if we, if we actually characterize it based on your uh, STPNs versus on the right-hand side, when you are just taking level of service, you see that uh, the distribution of SSIM just using the uh, LOS map is uh, really overlapping. So uh, the discriminative power when we take it to STPN and then do it is, is significantly higher. Uh, so, um, so basically what we are trying to do is if we had, if we had data, uh, have data and have data-driven approaches, uh, 
we integrate the traffic flow theory principles in, in terms of uh, discretization of our time series, but then purely learn our traffic flow principles using the STPN networks instead of us forcing anything on them. Summary, um, this is the, what we described is a batch system anomaly detection algorithm. We could have extended it to the real-time detection algorithm using a restricted Boltzmann machine. Uh, in this case, we stuck with the batch system and, uh, and showed why we, are, we actually need it. Um, it, it, this can significantly Im improve in, in also causal association. We don't care about whether there is a crash on the road or not until unless it is actually affecting your traffic. Um, in future work, we'll try to extend it to multiple to multiple freeways, uh, and also al also try to find out those thresholds. Right now, we are using point a as a, eight as our threshold, but we we want to find out what what is that threshold that will give us a, a better representation. Representation. With that, uh, I'd like to end my talk and open up for any questions. Thank you.